When it comes to Pakistan, the Atlantic headline says it best. It reads, the ally from hell. Those four words top a terrifying piece of reporting by Jeffrey Goldberg and Mark Ambinder, because Pakistan is a nuclear-armed ally, an ally whose officials loudly denied Osama bin Laden was in their country, even though he was hiding near a major Pakistani military outpost, an ally that gets offended when American experts raise serious concerns about nuclear security. One Pakistani official saying, quote, of all the things in the world to worry about, the issue you should worry about the least is the safety of our nuclear program. But Goldberg and Ambinder find many reasons to wonder whether one day a warhead or nuclear material could fall into the wrong hands. Weapon components, they report, are sometimes moved around the country in vans like these with little or no security surrounding them. They cite an American intelligence source who says the Pakistanis aren't just toting around parts in these vans, but at times fully assembled warheads. In a moment, former uh, White House Homeland Security Advisor Fran Townsend and Fried Zakaria on the larger national security implications. But first, my conversation with the Atlantic's Jeffrey Goldberg. In terms of its nuclear arsenal, how much confidence should the U.S. have that Pakistan, that, that the arsenal is secure? The U.S. should have confidence that the people around the nuclear arsenal are among the best Pakistan has to offer. They have a very professional service guarding the nukes. The problem is twofold. One, Pakistan itself is not a stable place. Uh, and, and what the deep American worry is, is, is that the, the state itself will disintegrate. Uh, a second worry is that we, we have seen repeatedly that the Pakistani military, Pakistani intelligence services, are penetrated by people who are sympathetic or outright members of organizations like the Taliban. And so when you're, for instance, moving nuclear weapons from one place to another, which is how the Pakistanis hide them from among others, the Americans, uh, when you're moving those, if you have someone inside who's going to tell you, uh, you know, at so-and-so hour on so-and-so road, there is a, a truck with fissile material, with material that can be used for, say, a dirty bomb, then you've got a real problem, and that's what people worry about. And, and, and you've learned information about how they are moving their nuclear arsenal. Like any country with a nuclear arsenal, they have multiple ways they can move these devices and components of these devices from place to place. Uh, the Pakistanis have chosen, when they're moving, not to go with a, a high-profile, heavily armored sort of convoy presence on the roads. What they do is they use uh, subterfuge, essentially, or camouflage. They will put a warhead or fissile material, or sometimes, this is some one thing that we learned recently, that they've begun to put complete tactical nuclear warheads when they're moving together, uh, which is very, very significant uh, and dangerous. They will put them in the equivalent of delivery vans and, and drive them on certain routes from base to base. So they're, uh, they're putting a tactical nuclear warhead in essentially a delivery van? There's no other way to say it, yeah. Particularly in a country where there have been attacks in... Secure, uh, allegedly secure cities in Rawalpindi, and uh, there have been attacks on Musharraf, assassination attempts that, that clearly seem to indicate some level of inside knowledge. There was, right after the Abbottabad raid that killed Osama bin Laden, there was a raid on a Pakistani naval base outside Karachi. Uh, the, the, the Taliban figures who got into this base held it for about 18 hours. I mean, that means they raided it and they successfully held off security for 18 hours. They're very professional. And when I spoke to people in Pakistan about this, there was an assumption that these guys in this naval base uh, operation had inside help. How else would they have known how to secure a very complicated, very large naval base? You also report that the U.S. has very specific contingency plans about what to do in the event they do lose control of, of a device or devices. Right. Uh, and it involves a, a heavy military presence on the ground. Right. The, I mean, this is, this is one of the areas that, that is most contentious between Pakistan and the U.S. Pakistanis believe that the U.S. wants to seize the nukes preemptively. The U.S. would, of course, like Pakistan to be nuclear-free, but it has no plans of going in there and just taking the nukes. But the U.S. is worried about disintegration of the state, about, about Taliban being able to go steal a nuke or steal some nuclear material. Uh, and so there are a lot of plans on the shelves. Different components of the U.S. military have different plans to go in, if necessary, and go secure these nukes. Uh, and it's, it's, it's obviously it's, it's one of the most sensitive things that the U.S. military might be called upon to do. Do they know how many nukes there are? That's one of the problems. One of the problems is the U.S. only has an, approxim an approximate guess. Uh, it's believed that Pakistan has somewhere between 100 and 120 different nuclear devices. Now, of course, when the nuclear devices are kept separate, when the warhead is in one place and the fissile right. material becomes even more complicated. And another thing, 
it's believed by nuclear proliferation experts, non-proliferation experts, and U.S. intelligence that Pakistanis are trying to grow their nuclear arsenal. They're mm -hmm. trying to build more nukes. Uh, it's a fascinating article. Uh, Jeffrey Goldberg, thank you. Thank you.